Hi, Algebra 1, Semester 2. This is Ms. Claywell going over Skill 21, Application of Quadratic Formulas. So um, you guys should have your notes out and ready to fill these out with me. So we're going to first talk about a few steps that we can do for solving um, like word problems that have to do with the quadratic equation. Can you draw a diagram or a picture is the first question we want to ask ourselves. So a picture, a diagram that represents the situation. Then we ask ourselves, can you write equations? If so, would it be linear? So that's like where we have x to the first power, or would it be a quadratic? Which is like x to the second power. The third question that we want to ask ourselves, what, would, what are you being asked to solve for? Okay, we're going to jump into our example one. It says one side of the rectangle is four inches shorter than three times the other side. Find the sides of the area of the, if the area of the rectangle is 319 inches squared. So step one is to draw a diagram. We have a rectangle. So I'm going to draw a rectangle. Step two is to write equations. We're thinking if they're linear or quadratic. So we're going to start, we can at least identify our length and our width. One side of the rectangle is four inches shorter than three times the other side. So we're going to make one side x and the other time is four inches or less than three times. So we're going to have three x minus four. This is all referring to area. Area equals length times width. I know my area is 319 inches. I know my length is 3x minus 4. I know my width is x. So from here, I can write this and want to move this into standard form because if we ever want to solve a quadratic equation, we want to be able to write it in standard form. So I'm working to get one side equal to 0 and have it in ax squared plus bx equals c form. So now I can clearly see what my A, B, and C are. So now that I've identified my A, B, and C, I can start using my quadratic formula. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And I knew to use the quadratic formula because the equation for my area that I have an x squared, which makes this a quadratic. So now I'm going to take the necessary steps to simplify. So when I solve this, this could be 11 or negative 9.7. We cannot use the negative because our distance cannot be negative. Our side length cannot use. Our side length cannot be negative. So one side is 11. And then the other side is 3 times 11 minus 4. So I have an 11 inch and 29 inches is my side length. Okay. Going on to example 2. I have another rectangle situation. I want you to pause the video and try to draw and label a diagram relating to this. Okay, so my rectangle, I have length and width. My length is 6 more than the width, so that's my x plus 6. The area is 91, so area equals length times width.
Once again, I'm reading this in standard form. So now that I'm in standard form again, I can identify my A, B, and C. And I can use my Google quadratic equation, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So x can equal 7 or negative 13. Once again, for the same reasons as above, we can't use the negative 13 because we can't have a negative side length. So I'm going to use x equals 7. So my width equals 7. My length equals 6 plus 7. So that's 13. And then I wanted it refers to everything in inches. So I want to have my inches of units or my unit be inches. Okay, go ahead and flip your page over to example three. Now we're going to physics. We have um, a building that is a hundred and a thousand two hundred feet tall, and we drop an object or an object to start from it. And this is the equation for the height when my input is time. So if I put in a t 1, that would give me my height at 1 second. A 2, my height at 2 seconds, so on. So we're going to go on to this next part. Where is the object 3 seconds after we threw it? So we're going to think, like, I have this little building. This is 100 a thousand a thousand two hundred feet I'm gonna throw it and I want to know where it is at three seconds so my input is so my T equals three and my H equals zero or I don't know my H so I'm gonna figure out what H is when my T is three so I'm using the equation from above and I'm plugging in a three seconds for t. Good morning. So the object is 1,104 feet in the air. Part B asks us when will the object reach its maximum height. How height will it be? So if I think about this shape, I have a shape like this. I want the vertex. So last lesson we learned how to find the vertex. So that's h equals negative b over 2a. So that's negative 16 and my a is 2 times negative 16. So I reach my max height at 0 0.5 seconds and then I want to plug that in so t equals 0 0.5, or it's at 0 0.5 seconds. I want to now know my height by plugging in that half a second. Good morning, Asher. Good morning. So my height is 1,204 feet. So it's going to be... At 0 0.5 seconds, it'll be at its max height. Of 1,204 feet. The last question in our notes. Good morning, Josie. The last question in our notes is, when will the object reach the ground? So this is when my height equals zero. So I'm going to take my original equation, set it equal to zero. This is like, um, 
standard form now, so I can use this to find what t value makes my h equals zero, my height equals zero, so I'd use the quadratic equation. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Good morning. So we can have 9.2 seconds or negative 8.2. Once again, we can't use the negative time. So our answer would be 9.2 seconds. Um, come to class with any questions.